So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, many of you might be aware of R Shine, which is a package that makes it easy to build interactive web apps straight from R. Today, I'll be introducing a shinier alternative to R Shiny uh, for Python developers. So, uh, a little bit about me. My name is Darshata. I'm the maintainer of the open source project Atri Framework. It's a new full stack web development framework. A few months ago, we released a beta version of this framework and we have been receiving great feedback from uh, uh, developers across the globe. And we wanted to uh, take this opportunity to also present it to the uh, NHS group that's present here. Uh, I'm also the co-founder and CEO of A3 Labs, which is the company behind this open source project. Um, I've worked in machine learning and data science fields in academia and industry. Um, after studying engineering during my undergrad, I worked in quant finance and then moved to academic research at MIT. I later dropped out of my graduate program at MIT to work on my startup full time. Um, one uh, fun fact of, uh, about me uh, is about one of the personal projects that I'm doing, which is that I'm editing and managing the publication of a set of novels that my grandfather wrote over the last five decades. So it's a really cool uh, piece of family history, but also uh, supporting uh, you know, the literary work that he has been doing uh, and bringing it in front of people. So the way I've structured this presentation is firstly, I'll quickly introduce what uh, Atri framework is, which is like, what is this alternative to our shiny? How we can use it in Python? Uh, then secondly, I'm going to give uh, a quick demo of uh, a dashboard, a multi-page dashboard that I've built uh, using one of the data sets uh, provided by NHS. Uh, third would be showing you how it has been created. So giving you a behind the scenes look into how its front end has been created using a three editor and also how the backend has been created using Python. So front end would be basically any UI component that you see in the dashboard, how that has been set up. And that backend would be, for example, how uh, the data, for example, flows into the charts, how user actions are handled, and uh, how, how we actually respond to all of that. So to do that, I think uh, best place to go would be uh, the open source project itself. We have been building an open, uh, it's under GPL3 license and all of the development uh, is you know happening under this repo in GitHub under our organization name Atri Labs. It's called Atri Labs Engine. And everything that you need to know about the project is has been kind of introduced here. So I'll use it as a starting point for our conversation as well. So um, very quickly to introduce what this framework is, uh, and what it intends to do. Um, it's a full stack web development framework, which means that uh, we it supports front-end development, it supports back-end development, and it also provides support for quick deployment. So uh, on the front-end development side, uh, because it's for any size of web development need, be it uh, someone who wants to write React code and who is you know a full-time web developer versus uh, someone who lies on the other end of the spectrum and wants to use uh, wants to build front end visually using our visual editor uh, all like that entire range uh, and the entire spectrum of development is supported by uh, this framework backend development is supported uh, in python at the moment uh, but we are planning to add support for node.js soon so it's again going to be not just limited to the uh, python world or you know uh, JavaScript world as, as is most web development uh, technology that comes out. And then third is deployment support. So uh, we, we, we are adding you know uh, one click support for deployment at your platform of choice. If you want to deploy it and deploy it through GitHub pages, if you, do, if you want to deploy it through AWS, et cetera, we can do that using the screen. Um, one common question that we get is what can I actually build using it? So 
anything it's it's a general purpose framework so anything that uh, that lies in web can be created using it so i i can quickly show you example of some of the uh, websites that have been built using this framework so this is like a e-commerce website that that has been built um using the framework and like uh, all the uh, back end is also uh, hooked into it uh, and then there are you know things like personal blog um that are also you know that have also been built that have also been built using this framework um to uh, contextualize how it's different from other frameworks i think one of the biggest things that we should know is um that i briefly touched upon that most new web development uh, frameworks are limited to the javascript world so they are not uh, but but we know that a lot of development is now happening beyond that world as well so for example uh, people who are back end developers and use python people who are data scientists and use python or are uh, people who are machine learning engineers they also need to do back end development uh, for example for even simpler things like sharing the results of their uh, sharing the intermediate results of their work to uh, things like creating uh, you know fully fun- fully interactive web uh, applications or fully interactive dashboard applications uh, natively through python so that is one of the uh, biggest uh, differences that we see uh, as compared to other frameworks that you see in the market and then it comes with a suite of productivity tools such as visual editor asset management tools that i'm going to quickly introduce uh, to you uh, and the goal is to significantly reduce development time so that you don't have to worry about uh, you know lots of uh, lot, lots of uh, uh, things that go on behind the scenes and you can just focus on uh, you know your uh, getting getting quickly to uh, production so that is that um in order to get started it's very simple you just write one line pip and install a3 and <clears throat> the visual editor becomes available in a local host and once we click build and run the app itself becomes available um so uh, let me actually go to the demo and show you exactly what we have built so let me go to the login page first okay so this is the dashboard um it has a simple login page um so let me my credentials are already saved here so let me log in and when i log in i am taken to this dashboard uh what this dashboard is showing me is um <clears throat> it's taking the monthly hospital episode statistics data set it's provided by nhs digital and for a given a uh, treatment specialty it's showing me firstly what has been the activity monthly by admission type so if i for example zoom in to say 31st january 2021 i get a breakdown of the different kinds of cases that uh, the different kind the different types of activity that all the nhs uh, the, the entire nhs has observed in this month so what what are the number of emergency cases what are the number of uh fae cases fce cases ordinary admission episodes and so on um this chart for example shows what were the appointments uh, it it shows a breakdown of the types of appointments in the last 6 months so the number of appointments that were attended the number of appointments that were cancelled and number of ones where uh, people didn't show up um and this chart will this chart shows uh, the percentage fces uh, with procedures in the last 6 months again for this specialty that's selected here which is 100 general surgery service and then finally uh, this is another view into the patient activity data in rolling 12 month basis and year to date basis um i can see in the last 12 month and compare it with the previous uh, 12 month cycle and see what has been the change in each of these uh, activities if i want to see uh, the legend i can click here and get a deeper understanding into exactly how these things have been defined 
so uh, fae is the finish admission episode but exactly how it has been defined is available here um and so on. like all all the different um, <clears throat> terms that you see in the dashboard can be explained by the legend page that's again uh, linked with um this dashboard um and if you want to see the uh, if you want to see exactly how this app has been uh, has been created then it's also linked with um the github repo so again it's open source and you can see uh, like you can get access to the entire code and you can play around with it um so coming back to uh, this app um one of the things that happens here is that if if a user for example chooses a different um treatment specialty then they see uh, like all all this data set gets updated and we see uh, you know all this information uh, with respect to this specific specialty which is ophthalmology um i think we can uh, now quickly i'm i'm conscious of time so let me uh, quickly go uh, and show you the behind the scenes look into uh, how this dashboard has been prepared so um i mentioned the uh, i mentioned the visual editor which is one of the productivity tools uh this productivity tools ensures that you don't have like you can build most of what you see uh, without having to code so that's a really cool um that's a really cool um feature but it it also ensures that you stick to uh the latest web standards so that uh for example your work looks good in all the different screen sizes which is one of the uh, important requirements uh, <clears throat> for web applications and uh, it also ensures that you kind of stick to the other uh, principles that have been provided by all the different browsers so this is the editor that's linked that basically generates this app and if we quickly uh, take a look into exactly what's happening here so there are three different pages here so this is the home page which is basically the login then dashboard and legend page uh this is the component manager which helps us to add any component onto the uh, front end uh asset manager shows all the different uh, images that we are uh, that we have in our dashboard uh, or in our app altogether um if i click on any component like we call each of this a component so this is a text box component and you can see the variable name or alias here um if you want to change anything uh, that has to do with its style so for example if i want to change uh, like in this case we have applied a font we have applied a weight uh, and a, a style and a color so this entire thing has been uh, you know provided through this style panel this is what we call a custom panel uh, which is basically overriding the exact text that appears in this text box and then you have this other uh, panel which is for actions uh, actions are for example more uh, important in um, say button where you expect a user activity and so on. so you can see that all these charts have like uh, the charts here are displaying a dummy data because we just dragged and dropped um, a, for example a bar bar chart onto the canvas and uh, we haven't really uh, in in this specific case we are just creating the front end through uh, the editor so uh, like this is all dummy data but uh, then comes the interesting part uh, as to how do i actually hook uh, how do i actually hook my data from python directly to the app so that simply uh, like we can do that very simply by going to the project repository so this is a project repository and i had uh, launched the editor uh from this project repository so everything you see uh inside this nhs demo folder has been auto generated except for this folder which is called backend it includes all the different functions that um <clears throat> that help us in data processing the if you want to add any backend to any page 
then we need to go to its main.py file. So if we look at, uh, like, if I collapse this, then I see that inside routes, there are three main.py files. One is inside the dashboard page uh, for, you know, uh, so that you can uh, take, apply it back into the dashboard page. And similarly, uh, you see one inside the legend page and then one here, which is for the home page. So again, this is uh, this is auto generated. It it represents the life cycle of um, it, it, th these three functions represent the life cycle functions. So init state helps us in uh, providing data that we want uh, as an initial state of the app. So whenever we click, whenever we publish the app, then if we by default if we want that app to show a certain data set. Uh, like if you want it to show certain data, then we'll provide that data through init state. Handle page request is when we want a user to, uh, the data that we want uh, a user to see when they load a specific page in the browser. And handle event, as the name suggests, is to, um, is to specify what to do when a, a specific user activity happens. So if I go to the dashboard page, then here, we we don't have anything in init state, but inside handle page request and handle event, we are calling uh, a function that we wrote called set filter. And set filter basically uh, modifies all the uh, charts according to the value that was selected from the dropdown. So if it's handle page request, meaning uh, if someone is loading the browser, uh, loading the page in the browser for the first time, then we want them to see uh, all the information with respect to general surgery service treatment specialty. It can be anything, but for, for, you know, uh, for the purpose of this um, discussion, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, it's said this way. Uh, but handle event is when someone wants to, uh, like if, if you want to handle uh, how, uh, if, you, if you want to handle how, uh, to you know, take the data in uh, from the user, then it's very simply uh, like let me show you one. Uh, let let me basically rewrite this to demonstrate something again. So, um, okay, let me go back here. So this is the uh, drop down that we are uh, talking about. It's uh, it's renamed to specialty drop down because it's you know helping us select specialty. So uh, if we want to access anything, um, any if we want to ac access any property um, corresponding to any component that we have in our uh, front end, we do it using this uh, AT object. AT object is, uh, it, it provides us access to all the components that we have and it allows us to you know, uh, access data, manipulate data, override data, and so on. So in, in this specific case, what I want to do is that if someone has selected, uh, like if someone has uh, changed the dropdown, then do something. So all I have to do is, you know, write this chained operation for any component uh, in a thread. Editor. So you don't really need to know the documentation. So the moment I write at dot, then I see a uh, like I see a dropdown of all the different components that are available in uh, this page. So in my case, I want to uh, access the data that specialty dropdown has. So I'll do I, I just selected it and then I press another down. Now I can um, you know access the styles panel, the custom panel, and the actions panel again. So let me uh, go and select on change. And now what I want to do is, uh, now what I want to do is uh, call this set filter function, provide them this data model so that it can manipulate all the components by, by accessing the AT, uh, uh, variable and provide it the value that the user had actually selected. So uh, again, to access the value that the user had selected, we have to go to the component. So we'll do at 
dot name of the component which is specialty drop down dot custom and it, when you press dot then we again see a lot of uh, options uh, we see displayed values we see all the available values but what we are interested in in this case is selected value because we want to see we just want to know what the uh, what what like one specific uh, treatment was uh, specialty that the user had selected so i i uh, no, basically did that i've got to move on can you just wrap it up okay. yeah 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 sure sure so um this is uh, yeah this is basically how you write backend in uh, a thread editor so it's again uh, very simply using chained operators and uh, like you can create your own functions the way that i've created here and to manipulate any uh, component you just do ap dot component name and if you want to change like depending on what you want to change if you want to change the custom property then you do custom dot name the property if you want to change um you know uh, styles then you uh, pr uh, proceed accordingly um and the moment we save this uh, the the results of, uh, automatically reflect in the a3 uh, app that we have running in our local host um so i hope this gave you a, a brief introduction into uh, what this framework is how it can be used in python um so let me conclude with that and um thank you for listening and if you're interested you can check out the open source project that we are building start it try it out and uh, let us know any feedback that you might have okay round of applause thank you